I've lived in Florida my whole life. Don't feel bad. Save your tears and sympathy for someone else because I don't fucking need them. Living in this wasteland has made me a stronger man. It's taught me discipline. Taught me to say no to bath salts. Taught me to run away from old men at the beach. Invaluable life lessons that you can't learn anywhere else. And over the last decade or so, people have really been making fun of Florida, if you can even believe that. Mainly for their crazy headlines like... Florida man sticks bottle rockets up his asshole at the zoo, hops the fence at the alligator exhibit, charges alligators with bottle rockets flying out of his colon, spectators traumatized. And you know, this whole Florida man epidemic. And I thought, well, I've lived here for so long, I think I'm the only one qualified enough to rank these Florida men stories. So today is going to be a nice little Florida man tier list, so let's just go ahead and get right into this here. The first story here is just a classic Florida fairy tale. Man strips naked at a Chick-fil-A and chases strangers around screaming for them to look at his penis. When officers arrive at the scene, he demands the officers look at his penis and his ass. Hitting the officers with the wombo combo in the body cam footage, you can hear him say, Look at my ass, how do you feel? Reminds me of something a therapist would say when they hold up the ink blots and then say, hey, are you getting an emotional response? You know, these Rorschachs, are they making you feel something? So perhaps it wouldn't be too big of a leap to say that maybe this man was just trying to look out for the mental health of everyone at the Chick-fil-A by proudly parading his cock balls and ass around. Now overall, this story isn't special. This is happening at every Chick-fil-A on a weekly basis in Florida. I can't even remember the last time I dined at a Chick-fil-A without a floppy penis in front of my face. I just thought it'd be good to ease us on into this with a common occurrence story like this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this at a D tier rating here just because it is very bland. It's like the vanilla ice cream of Florida Man stories. Now this next story is one I'm sure we're all familiar with by now and it revolves around bath salts. The story that put bath salts on the map. In 2012 in Miami, a homeless man was eating the face off of another homeless man due to being under the influence of bath salts. Everyone speculated this could be the first outbreak of a zombie apocalypse or something. The doomsday where zombies befall all of us and eat all of our fucking faces off. This was massive. This was like the new boogeyman. You know, parents would tell their kids, eat those vegetables or a bath salt attic is going to bust through the window and eat your face off. It was terrifying, but I think it's very important that we put this on the tier list to highlight the dangers of bath salts as well as just remember how close we were to some type of resident evil future with bath salts and cannibalism. So this is going at a B ranking, and it really was absolutely horrible, but this story was so massive that it's impossible to ignore when talking about Florida. It's something that Florida's become known for with its bath salts and then this cannibalism incident, because it happened a couple times if I remember correctly, but I just wanted to talk about the most famous one here. And since we're already talking about zombies and eating faces off, let's talk about state of survival. If you want to be prepared for the zombie apocalypse, you can try state of survival. The most fun way of preparing for apocalypse is through state of survival, the zombie themed survival strategy mobile game that immerses you in a post-apocalyptic world where you need to learn how to survive. This game has everything, an interesting storyline with virus leakage, Battle, conspiracy, even more virus leakage, rebellion, and even an evil company called Gigacorp, those responsible for the zombie outbreak currently plaguing us. In order to defeat Gigacorp, you must develop your settlements and push back the infernal undead. Enlist the help of your closest and most trusted friends by creating alliances to compete in both action-packed PvE and PvP battles with stunning graphics and tower defense gameplay. Just between you and me, there are also a lot of crazy hidden secrets to be found behind the scenes. This free-to-play game is full of fun in-game events with exciting resource rewards. By playing State of Survival, you will learn all the necessary skills to survive in the apocalypse. Do you have what it takes to fight against an overwhelming amount of zombies? Find out now. If you download State of Survival now using our link, you will also enter an Amazon gift code giveaway automatically. Use code PENGUINZ0SOS to claim an in-game starter pack and State of Survival will choose 15 random people to win $50 Amazon gift cards. So if you're interested, you can download State of Survival now using the link below and you can use our creator code to just get a nice little in-game starter pack to help you build up your settlements, speed ups, and plenty of resources as well as a rare hero named Rusty. So if you're interested, feel free.
Now, fuckle your seatbelts for this one. Really strap in, because this is a wild ride. In 2018, a 71-year-old man's body was found. He was shot in the chest, pronounced dead, and ruled a homicide. But there was no gun to be found, and it was a very mysterious death with all the surveillance camera footage they had. Everything just seemed very fishy. Was the Zodiac killer back? What had happened to this 71-year-old man who had no... Uh, enemies or anyone that would want him dead his wallet and everything wasn't taken it wasn't some kind of robbery so the question becomes who killed this man and why in a case fit for Sherlock Holmes these detectives had a Herculean task in front of them over the next few weeks they made little progress in cracking this case there was no signs of a struggle it clearly wasn't a robbery they had no really good leading theories on what went on they could have fucking speculated Slenderman had killed this guy for all they knew it wasn't until they finally unlocked his phone that they started to notice some very odd things. Firstly, he had purchased a 600 gallon weather balloon and a 40 cubic foot helium tank. This was very out of character for this particular man, according to his family. And then it was at this point that they started to actually walk the trail they found him on and found a very odd discrepancy in the time between the gunshot and the time it actually takes to walk from the entrance where he was picked up on camera to where he was ultimately shot. It was at this point that a man named Detective Brian hatched this crazy fucking tinfoil condom conspiracy theory where he said, It's not a homicide. It was a suicide. Detective Brian speculated that this particular 71-year-old gentleman had purchased a weather balloon, rubber bands, this helium tank, and had tied a gun to a string, shooting himself in the chest with the gun and having the weather balloon carry the gun away, getting rid of the evidence. This man is like the fucking L from Death Note with this kind of theory. But, as it would turn out, after unlocking his phone, going through his search history, the 71-year-old man was googling how to commit suicide, how much helium is required to carry an item that weighs X amount of pounds away, and all kinds of things that would indicate that he was researching how to shoot himself and then carry the gun away on a weather balloon. The, the reason for why it still remains a mystery to this day. But this case has officially been ruled a suicide, and the most likely place where he learned this method came from an episode in 2003 of CSI Las Vegas where they weather ballooned a gun out of a crime scene. They have no fucking idea why he did this and faked his own murder. Maybe he just wanted to create a little mystery for detectives to solve just to challenge them or something to make sure they were fit for their position. No one has any fucking clue there. But I know that everyone says everyone in Florida is really goddamn stupid, just a bunch of fucking idiots living in Florida, but I think this man proves them all wrong. This was nearly the perfect crime, and he would have got away with it too if it wasn't for those meddling wives unlocking his phone, because if they hadn't unlocked his phone and saw a search history, they would still have no idea what happened. I'm definitely putting this at an S-tier Florida man story. This next story is pretty brand new. This happened very recently with a Florida man clinging to the hood of a semi-truck and riding it for nine miles in what is a high-octane, full-throttle, nuts-to-butts action sequence. So in the video, you can see the man on the hood of the semi-truck. He's banging on the window. The window's cracked. The truck driver's panicking, swerving, breaking hard, trying everything he can to get this man off his hood. Damn near trying to do like a fucking backflip with this semi-truck to get him off. And it's not working. This man has got the death grip on the hood. This shit looks like a scene out of Fast and Furious or Mission Impossible. Like, who's to say this isn't Tom Cruise doing a stunt on the highway? Now, we don't know what led to this whole ordeal here. Maybe a verbal argument where the truck driver said, hey, kissing your sister is bad, and this guy took a fence and hopped on the hood. There's really no telling. Plugging this into the tier list, this is an easy A. Now, there are going to be some people that fight me on this ranking. I understand that, but I'm going to defend it. Even though the camera work here is great, the people that filmed this did a fantastic job. Hats off to them, sloppy kisses on the lips for them because the filming here is wonderful. The only thing it's lacking is an explanation. I don't know the lore, I don't know why this has happened. And actually, I kind of would have liked to see a little more action, like some Michael Bay shit. Maybe there's some trees exploding in the background, maybe an attack helicopter gets involved chasing or something, you know? I just feel like there was room for even more crazy shit to happen. But as it is, it's a fantastic Florida man freak out. Now let's go ahead and tackle what everyone kind of knows Florida for, alligators. For some reason, alligators are so central to the image of Florida that it's one of the first things people picture right next to incest. 
So we're going to go ahead and go through some alligator stories here, kind of speed run them, because there is a fucking ton of these, so we just chose some of the best ones that we could find. So the first one here is pretty recent. A few years ago, a man was arrested for throwing a live three-foot alligator through the drive through window of a Wendy's. We don't know exactly what motivated him to do this. Perhaps it was for a viral TikTok challenge. There's really no telling, but the man was charged with aggravated assault. I don't know if the alligator was charged, but I do hope the alligator finds some better friends. Now, this is definitely a C-tier story. Perhaps there's more to this, like maybe it's some Guardians of the Galaxy shit where maybe this alligator is this guy's sidekick, you know? Maybe they're like a, a tag team of crime or something but it's not the the greatest florida man story out there and it would have been even cooler if he was like akimboing alligators like dual wielding them and then tossed them both in or something that would have at least brought it up to a b but this shit is a terrible fucking prank if that's what it was this next story comes from jacksonville where a facebook prankster goes into a convenience store with a live alligator and chases a man around pretending that he's mad about the last bit of beer he was clearly doing this as a joke and then grabs his little Miller Lite to butt chug in the bathtub later and throw up. This is absolutely an F tier Florida man story. This shit fucking sucks. Facebook pranksters suck. This whole thing is garbage. Chasing people with an alligator in a store. It's some cruel garbage. Absolute fucking trash. Now this next one's actually a heartwarming story. Most Florida men just kick and beat up alligators or rape them. Just some fucking terrible shit that these Florida inbreds do to alligators. But this guy is actually very sweet. He treats them like little family pets by reading them stories and singing to them. And recently he's been doing it during the pandemic to keep them calm and relaxed. He was worried the alligators were stressing, so he began reading some like Dr. Seuss books to them and singing some songs like Wonder Wall and shit in their exhibit. And it's actually just adorable. This is a heartwarming tale involving Florida men and alligators, so this one's definitely going up there at a nice, cool, B-tier Florida man story. Now this next story sounds like something out of Leonardo DiCaprio's Catch Me If You Can. So a man in Daytona was being charged with threats against Chevrolet. He was demanding $50,000 in a 2019 Chevy Malibu, which looks like dog shit, by the way. No offense to Malibu drivers out there, but if you're going to risk your fucking life for the sake of a car, you might as well choose a good car, like a cyber truck or two school buses stacked on top of each other or something fucking badass, like a Mad Max mobile. But anyway, he wanted the Malibu, he wanted $50,000, and he was threatening to release customers' social security numbers that he had found. And in response, obviously Chevrolet filed charges against this man, and this guy hatched the genius idea of impersonating the prosecutors and having the charges dropped against himself. So his plan was pretty simple. He used the Florida bar numbers and the names of a couple prosecutors and filed a no information filing against himself, meaning there were no charges against him. Unfortunately, this man being the fucking Neanderthal that he is filed the wrong papers and that, tr that triggered a lot of alarms and they were able to deduce that this was not the actual prosecutors, this was the man in question pretending to be them, which in and of itself carries multiple other felonies. So by impersonating these people, he got himself an additional three or four felonies, I think it was, and could face multiple decades in prison for it, and he is currently being hail held without bail. This right here is an A-tier Florida man scheme. This is absolutely fantastic. The only reason it's not an S-tier scheme is because I would have liked a little bit more ingenuity when it comes to impersonating. I mentioned Catch Me If You Can earlier. I think it was a lot more creative what he was able to do. This, he just looked up Florida bar numbers and some names and then pretended to file the documents. He grabbed some other papers as well and just kind of altered them a little bit. So He filed a lot of fraudulent shit, but... Nothing about it really screamed creative genius, you know what I mean? It could have been a lot more in-depth, but even as it stands, it's great. He got himself an additional couple decades in prison as a result of him trying to be some kind of super clever supervillain. So, it's a very good story. Definitely worthy of A tier, at least. In Newport Ritchie, a man was arrested for trying to steal a truck with a teen in the back seat of the truck. So, of the five people that live in Newport Ritchie, unfortunately, one of them turned out to be a criminal. And the story doesn't stop there. After this man was arrested, he was released from jail three days later and was again arrested in the parking lot for trying to steal a car that had an off-duty officer inside of it. He left the prison and he walked over to a car with an officer inside of it, yanked on the handle and tried to steal it and was again arrested. So this was kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy here. He kind of took care of himself. I think he just enjoyed being in jail and was trying to speed run going back. So this right here, I'm giving this a C-tier ranking, and I look forward to revisiting this story in a year or so when he's arrested again for trying to steal an ice cream truck or something. 
These are all the Florida Man stories that we wanted to cover this time around. Obviously, there's hundreds of thousands to choose from, but these were the ones that we remembered and definitely thought were worth ranking on a tier list, at least to start. So yeah, that's about it. So yeah.